Welcome back, everybody, to the Successful Parents Podcast. I'm your host, Wanda Howard, and today we have with us Todd Mitchell. He is the owner of Cybersecurity for Biz, and this is going to be a conversation all about how to keep our families secure, safe from cyberbullying, and definitely listen as we discover all the things that we can start doing right now today to keep our kids safe, to make sure that they have what they need to be able to enjoy electronics, enjoy the world around them, and know how to keep themselves safe. So welcome, Todd. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, this is a, a great uh, great opportunity to uh, meet some like-minded individuals, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, uh, um, share some, some good information and uh, make everybody a little safer. Yes, definitely. So tell us a little bit more about your business. How did cybersecurity even get started? You are a retired U.S. military, right? Correct. So how did you end up going from that into security? What Tell us all the things. Um, well, let's see. I I was in the, the, the Navy for 20 years and then retired, and I was actually working in uh, retail. And um, back in 2008, the economy tanked and unemployment shot through the roof. And um, I decided retail wasn't really the place to be during a uh, recession. And I went to college. I can't say back because it was the first time. So I was like a 42 year old freshman sitting around a bunch of 18 year olds thinking, what the heck am I doing here? But um, uh, I went to college and uh, pursued a lifelong interest. Um, at that point, I was a complete computer geek, had been building my own computers for years. And um, I uh, got an IT degree ended up working for the Marine Corps, uh, developing software for um, the secret internet. Um, and uh, cybersecurity is real big on that, obviously. Um, and uh, I pursued a master's degree in cybersecurity policy. And that kind of led to uh, being an expert in cybersecurity. And a couple of my friends ran into trouble and they own their own business and they wanted help. And I was trying to find them somebody that could help them. And I found out that there are like zero resources for entrepreneurs and micro businesses with like one to five employees and families and things like that. Um, all these big companies, the ads you see on TV for Cisco, IBM, and, you know, AT&T, Verizon, Comcast, all that. They're all say they work with small business, but what they really mean is like 250 employees or more with big server rooms and all that stuff. So uh, I developed a system to be able to scale down cybersecurity to what really matters to a very small group, like a family or a small business. And um, so that kind of became uh, something that I did to help a couple of friends. And then they convinced me to quit the corporate life and open my own business. So here I am, <laughs> the, the entrepreneur helping other entrepreneurs. I love it so much when business comes from a place of service where there is just a need that needs to be met. And you did that and you built an amazing company. So thank you so much for doing that and for being here. I'm excited to dive into what we can do to help our kids right now. So what are the biggest concerns that you are seeing right now for kids with electronics? Well, one of the big concerns is um, uh, it starts with the basic question of uh, who's in charge of cybersecurity in your household. And the reason why I say that is um, uh, Pew Research recently did a study about a year and a half ago um, and released the results. And they actually were the survey was um, catered towards 13 to 17 year olds. Um, and some of the questions that they asked, the answers were quite shocking. Um, one of them was, you know, who's in charge? So 34% of teens think they're in charge of cybersecurity in their household. 24% said their dad is, 18% said their mom is. So uh, the, the concerning thing about that is there's no clear picture of who's in charge of online safety inside of a family unit. Um, and I think the correct answer is everybody is. I mean, the parents are technically because they're supposed to be in charge of the family, hopefully. Uh, and But they're not always there. So you have to teach your teens and they need to be fully, uh, you know, and not even just teens because nowadays the internet kind of starts, especially you got kindergartners going to online school. Um, so this is something that everybody needs to take responsibility for, but you still need to have 
one person kind of named as accountable, so to speak, that's making sure it's happening. Yeah. And I love knowing that we need to talk to our kids. That's something that we already practice and do, but I've heard so many differing opinions on that. But one thing that I have definitely seen is we have been open with our kids and my kids are all nine and younger, but as we've been open with them and like, these are some of the things to be aware of, it's helped them feel like part of the team. So when I like, if you see a bad picture or if you see something that's unfamiliar, if something pops up and you don't know what it is, come tell us. So that way we can spot what's going on that way we know what's happening and they kind of feel like they're their own little secret agents where they're helping mom and dad catch the bad guys kind of a thing so what what kind of ways can we get kids involved that help them feel like they're the one in control and it's not just mom and dad creating right rules? so one of the ways is um uh, having having helping your children to own their online presence and what I mean by that is um, you need to kind of explain to them and, and children are going to learn this really fast as parents that have a hard time trying to view the concepts, but your online world doesn't have to be the same as the real world. You know, you can, you can make up, you know, your, your, your son can be, you know, uh, have an avatar picture and, and a, um, a call sign or, you know, hashtag or, or username or whatever can be you know somebody from the pirates of the caribbean or something you know they can be captain jack sparrow or whatever um and and that's fun and engaging for them but it's also safe because now somebody talking to captain jack sparrow doesn't realize that it's you know so and so from this school district then they see some other picture of you posted for them playing in the park or the street sign behind them and now they know what road you live on and they already know what town you're in because of the school district and the next thing you know they have you know all your personal identifiable information and can show up at your house or whatever um so having them own their own online presence and 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 put a little thought into you know making a uh unidentifiable well un undistinguishable to them personally you know usernames and, and account information um and then the second thing is, you know, just remaining positively engaged, Keep making it fun, making it making, you know, it's it's not a you have to do this or or else I'm grounding you. It's it's a hey, wouldn't it be really cool if you could be whatever Disney character you wanted to be online and, you know, and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then the third thing is getting into the cyberbullying a little bit, you know, is just instill into uh, people, you know. Even though it's online and you're anonymous, you still need to be nice. Don't say something about somebody else that you wouldn't say to their face or that you wouldn't want them saying about you. And when it comes into bullying, if they get somebody says something bad about them, just ignore it. And most uh, social media platforms nowadays, there's a block button or a spam button or whatever, and you just and they're out of there and you don't have to listen to it. What you don't want to do is engage them and start some big long controversial thread going on and then everybody's paying attention um you know it's you just ignore it and they'll go away kind of a thing yeah. Um, yeah. Well, definitely good tips one of the things that um comes up in my mind well there's two so one um my family growing up was very very uh like there was a lot of paranoia as the internet was like coming out and more and more and they just didn't even know how to prepare for it or what to say to us kids and uh, anyways there's a big long story there but basically we had tape over all of our cameras like on the computer and um, fake names and pictures and everything and it kept us safe but one of the things for me that I experienced is that that paranoia feeling of wondering like I felt like the internet world was out to get me and who can I actually trust? And it, it created this fear of meeting strangers, meeting people. And as I got older and I needed more coping skills, that was really difficult. So what are the like stepping stools that we can kind of give to our kids? So when they're young, they're doing these things to just learn the skills of the online world, but then they need to have a place where they start actually being themselves online. How do, how do they make yeah. that transition? So the, 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 um, I'm not sure how to teach your children on it, but the, the short answer to that is, is you need to kind of just be aware basically of what you're saying and how you're saying it. Um, you can tell people what you do or where you live without saying exactly where you live. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm, when I'm like, 
asking you uh, online and chatting with you. And I'm like, oh, so where do you live? You don't need to give me your street address. You, know? yeah. <laughs> you can just say, oh, we live on the east side of town or, you know, I'm out in the country. You wouldn't, you, you can, you know, whatever. And, and so you can be kind of vague about things <clears throat> and not, you know, um, the biggest problems that I've seen is um, a lot of times parents just need to be honest about the actual threats and explain why, you know, tell them, don't just say, Oh, don't, don't say that, you know, or whatever you, you, you explain to them, look, you know, there are some people out there that would like to do bad things and we don't want them to know exactly where we live. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's kind of the same things to put it into a, a more of a real world analogy. You know, I always joke about how, Women just know you don't leave your purse in the front seat of the car when you run into the store. You stick it in the back seat. You cover it with your coat. It's the same thing online. You know, don't in, in today's world. I know everybody loves to do that. You're on Twitter going, "Oh, I'm getting ready to go to the store." Oh, well, that means your house is empty now. I can go rob it. You know, um, or that means I can go to this store and I'll find you in there somewhere. You know, uh, I've seen people that that call me up and they're like, "Oh, I'm being stalked. How do they always know where I'm at?" And then I. I Google their name and it comes up with like, you know, four square check-in points. And I'm like, okay, well, you just checked in at school, Taco Bell, the library, now you're home. I mean, and you wonder how they figure out where you're at, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, you just have to be sensible about it, um, basically. And there is a gray area in there. I mean, you can go too far, you know, I mean, I could make everybody totally safe by taking all, all your electronics and burying them in a lead box in the six feet deep in the middle of your backyard. But, you know, there's reality. So, what can you do to keep yourself safe while still being able to socialize with your friends and, you know, check your bank account and this and that. Um, and that's, I think the biggest thing is like I was saying, you kind of separate your lives into categories, you know, and you, you know, if, if you're talking online um, in public, even though you're talking to your best friend that lives across the street and they know exactly where you live, don't mention things that other people from the other side of the country may hear and be able to do something with, yeah. um, keep some of your information a little bit private. Um, and a lot of it too is um, sharing user account information, which I know is huge. You know, everybody's got somebody else's Netflix password and they traded it for their Hulu password or their Disney plus password or whatever. And the problem with that, it's, it's not I won't even get into whether, you know, the the issues with the with the passwords themselves. But, you know, it, it, the problems can come from if that Netflix password is the same as your mom's bank account password. Then now all your friends have your mom's bank account password. And then all of a sudden one of them is not your friend anymore and wants to do something bad. And yeah, so it's just kind of being aware of who you're sharing this information with and whether it's in public or it's in private is kind of the big thing. Yeah. And while you were saying that one of the imageries that came to my mind was um, in public on off the electronics, we can have a conversation with somebody and we are very aware of our surroundings. We're aware of whether or not we're on a stage or if we're in a parking lot or in our home and we're very aware of those surroundings, but online you are basically on the world's biggest stage every single time that you're on there. So yeah. just being aware that you have no idea who's in the audience watching. So just make sure that the information you sit there that you share there is not private and personal. Yeah. And and that's one thing that people need to understand is, you know, what happens online stays online. And I mean, literally, because, you know, it's not like the, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens online stays online because you can't delete the internet. Mm -hmm. Um, you can go like you could post a picture right now on your Twitter and then you can go delete the Twitter, you know, later on today or whatever and and, you know, delete the picture off of it and even close your account if you wanted to. And yeah, it's gone for right now, but there is software out there easily available, Google in it and find out what Twitter looked like yesterday. And there's your stuff back <laughs> you oh, <know>? wow. <laughs> or it gets reposted. You know, you you post a picture, I repost it, and all my friends repost it. Now it's in a thousand different places and you'll never get rid of it. You know, um, and there's there's a whole industry um behind um on the the dark web of of 
being able to find people's passwords and information and pictures that have been stolen off of people's phones and all this kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a real threat um, that, and, you know, there's, there's several things like you were talking about in, uh, at the very beginning of this, there's several things that we can do for ourselves and our families um, that are free and easy um, to help make things safe. Um, the, the biggest one is passwords. That's, that's like, that's like a door lock, you know, <laughs> you, you have to have a strong password. And by strong, I mean like 12 characters long letters, numbers, symbols, all mixed together. Um, if it's a word you can find in a dictionary, you can crack that password in, in literally seconds, um, with a decent computer. Uh, and then the second thing is, you know, with the sharing and things like that, like we were talking about. And the third thing is your router. Your router is, the, think of it like the bouncer at a nightclub or something, you know, it's, it's the gate guard at the door, you know, um, that is what's stopping all the things trying to get into your house, into your computers and your phones. So um, one of the things that I've found is a lot of the routers come with a good strong Wi-Fi password and everybody and they come with instructions that say, you know, plug the power in here, plug the Ethernet cable in here and you're and fire up the Wi-Fi and you're good. What they don't tell you is the settings in your router, the the username and password to get into the router itself is like the username is admin and the password's password by default. And the firewall settings, which is like the, the bouncer at the door, the firewall settings are set to the lowest settings. So you need to go in there and raise them up to the highest level, change the password so that nobody else can get in there and change it back when you're done. And, you know, those type of things. And those are basic, free, easy things that people just need to be aware of, which is why, why I like doing this, because it's it's something that's just, I can't believe that it's not like common sense for everybody to go do this. But industry sometimes doesn't bother to tell you about it. So nobody knows that they need to do it. Um but those are you know two or three of the, the little quick, easy things that everybody can do real fast to uh, um, that. And the other thing is getting into the Internet of Things. Um, nowadays, you know, you have uh, you've got video game consoles, you've got refrigerators and TVs and everything else hooked to the uh, Internet. And it doesn't need to be on the same network that you're saving your bank account information and your homework or schoolwork and things like that. Um, so you leave your computers on the main network and you move all that other stuff to the guest network because all it really needs is internet access. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Okay. And that, that helps you separating those things kind of helps you too. And you were talking about the webcam with the tape. Mm -hmm. So you can't really see this very well, but this is like a little hat that my yeah. wife made that fits over the top of my webcam uh, because that is the one surefire way to make sure nobody's using your webcam to watch you when you're not even got your computer turned on or whatever, um, is to cover it up. So the, the tape is actually a good idea. They, they make little plastic guards you can put on there to have a little slider back and forth, or, or you can do like I did. I got an external one. So I, I got the little hat to fit over it. Um, but that's, that's also a good idea, especially older children to get into video gaming. Mm -hmm. Um, there are uh, um, a lot of instances of people on Twitch um, and uh, and uh, a couple of the other gaming platforms that do chat at the same time, Discord, stuff like that, where they can activate your camera or you forget to shut your camera off after you're done gaming and yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and for everybody listening, I know for me, when we start talking about all of the cyber things, eventually I start feeling like this, oh my goodness, I'm just going to be paranoid and I got to hide in a box. And and we definitely don't want to be doing that. We want to be making sure that you're having the tools that you need to feel safe in living your life. Um, one of the things that has really helped me to just know that we can use electronics, we can use these things is what we talked about in the beginning. And that's having conversations with our kids, with our family, these conversations, asking people that are in the cyber world of what are they doing? What are the things that we need to be paying attention to? Um, and then just keeping these practices in our home will keep us safe. And we won't have the horror stories and we won't have to experience the frustrations. And that's one of the things that I think why it can seem so surreal or unreal 
is if you're keeping these practices, you're not in danger. And so you're not experiencing any of the crazy experiences out there because you're following the right steps. So don't, don't think that these things aren't happening. Like there definitely are. Um, and there's always a way that you can keep enforcing those skills and those techniques and those security. So that way your family can remain safe. Um, Todd, before we get off, I wanted to ask you, what's the main thing that people can do? What's the very first thing that they're trying to make sure that their family is secure for me, my, my internet guy, we know personally, and he comes out and he's set everything up. I'm not a tech person. So for the most part, he says here, sign in here, put your password here, do this. And then I do those things, but he takes care of everything else. So what can people do on their own to just get started? What's the best way that they can get safe? I think the best thing is, is basically just having discussions um, and also with having discussions with your children, but also amongst yourselves um, with, with friends and, and, uh, and making sure everybody is just aware of just what you're saying and how and when. And also, if, you know, under different situations, if you have somebody that you're chatting with online that wants to meet with you, especially for the kids, but even for adults, and they're like, hey, let's meet up, you know, or, or whatever, whatever it is, whether you're on, you know, Craigslist trying to sell a old lawnmower to somebody or something, you don't have to give them your home address, you can meet them at Walmart, you know, <laughs> so yeah. at the public library or something where it's public, and there's video cameras, and that way, if something goes wrong, you're, you know, um, but that's just a lot of it is just basically talking, having the conversation about, you know, Hey, why is this guy talking to me? Why, why, why is this person keep chatting with me and wanting to be my friend? You know, what's what's their angle? Where are they coming from? And and you know, and just kind of using common sense. And if something feels wrong, just you know, I mean, everybody knows in in the real world, not in the virtual world, we've all you know turned down that dark alley or whatever or been on that you know somewhere walking around in the mall and you see this group of people and you just kind of your little hairs go up in the back of your neck and you're like okay this isn't looking like a good situation i gotta get out of here and you just need to kind of have that same general awareness when you're online If, if something's not feeling quite right then you know hit the power button if you know yes block them or or whatever but you're you're right i mean technology is a beautiful thing um, and when it's used correctly, it's very powerful. Uh, you know, I've got three or four computers and two cell phones and, you know, video games, all that stuff. So I'm on the computers all day long. And it's just a matter of just kind of using a little common sense and thinking about what situations you're in and, and who you're talking with and, and what you're letting them, what you're letting them find out about you. Yeah, definitely. And that's a great reason why people can come to your business, cybersecurity. Um, because it's just like learning how to drive a car. It's this amazing tool, amazing vehicle. You can get places way faster than walking, but you need to be aware of all of the different things. And if you've never taken driver's ed, you would never know all the things. So definitely everybody listening, go and check out Todd Mitchell's business, cybersecurity for biz.com. And, um, but Todd, is there anywhere else they can go that to connect with you or is that the best place? Um, yeah, that's actually, uh, that's actually the best place. It's through my website. Um, you can either call me, email me or, um, uh, fill out a contact form on my website. I, I react to all three basically on the same device. So it doesn't really matter which way. Awesome. More. And, um, if anybody's interested, uh, you know, no sales pitch and all that stuff. Um, if they want to contact me, I can give them, or actually I'll give it to you and you can, you can put it out too. Um, there is a, a national cybersecurity Alliance puts out a ton of little, what they call one, one page tip sheets for various, uh, uh, targeted towards different groups, you know, kids, teens, seniors, you know, gamers, uh, people planning weddings I mean, all kinds of different reasons. Um, and they basically kind of go over some of the stuff that we were just talking about. So, uh, they're, they're a good resource for, um, basic information to kind of point you in the right direction. No, oh, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Yes. And definitely send me those links so I can share with everybody here and I will put those down in the show notes down below. So thank you everybody for coming and thank you, Todd, for an amazing conversation and helping us keep our kids safe. Thank you. We'll see you all next time.